Um, well, just a quick recap of the Cal game. I think uh, a lot of the same thoughts held true when you look at the film. I thought our kids played um, really hard, good effort. I thought they showed a great deal of resiliency on both sides. Um, uh, the, the red zone defense was, was tremendous by our guys in creating the turnovers, getting the stops. Um, thought offensively there were some good things, and then obviously uh, us stubbing ourselves in the toe there uh, with the turnovers. Um, but all in all, it was a, it was a nice hard-fought win for us. And um, you know, I, think, I think when you when you win a game and then you win two in a row, you start to find a way to win games rather than uh, find a way to lose games. And we found a way to win a um, somewhat ugly football game. Um, but like I said to the, to the staff, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. So um, it's good to win two in a row. Fired up to be coming back to Century Link Field for the, for the final home game of the season. Um, a great opportunity for us to recognize our seniors and all that they've done for us uh, in, their, in their time here. Um, also opportunity to recognize uh, all of our Olympians in this past Olympics from the University of Washington, which is pretty cool. And then ultimately an opportunity to recognize you know, Veterans Day, Veterans Weekend for us. So um, a lot of stuff going on that way. Um, Obviously, another night game. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's by popular demand or not for everybody, but it'll be a night game. We're anticipating a great atmosphere, our, our crowd rocking. Um, really looking forward to a great environment, a chance to, to string three wins in a row. Go ahead and take questions from folks over here. When you looked at the film, in terms of the penalties, is there any, any real theme to the penalties at all? Or? No, you know, I mean, again, I. I not that all I do is defend our players by no means. You know, we, we have to be realistic and, and understand when we're right, when we're wrong. But, you know, probably half of them that got called on us, I don't agree with, you know. And, but that's, again, my job isn't to be an official, you know. If that, maybe, when I, maybe when I get done doing this, I'll go be an official and have fun doing that so I'm going to stay on the field and, and all that. But, you know, they call it, and you got to play it. You know, you play the hand you're dealt. We can't control what gets called or what doesn't. I thought our kids played a really hard physical game. Um, I, saw, I thought some of the things that called we didn't agree with. We sent it into the Pac-12, and we'll see what the response is. It's been, I mean, a few of your conference counterparts have talked about that there's a lot of penalties called in this conference, and maybe more than some others. Well, I think the stat going into last weekend was of the top 30 penalized teams in America, eight of them were from our conference. Um, and if by looking at, at our game and by looking at the SC Oregon game, and I believe there's one other I was watching, um, we're, we're probably now there's probably more than that, you know, because we're just there's a lot of penalties called. But, you know, like, like I was saying to the team, as long as everybody's getting the same penalties called on them, and it's a level playing field. That, that's all you can ask for, you know. And um, you know, but there's there's some stuff that we definitely want clarification on, so that we don't get the same penalties called on us again in the future. How did the team come up? Um, we were a little we were a little banged up. We we're a little beat up, but that's that's expected in a physical Pac-12 game, uh, especially on the road and a, and a team fighting for for bowl opportunity and bowl chances. We knew it was going to be a physical game, and so it's nice to have the extra day. You know, you, you get the shortened week leading up to it, but you get the extra day of rest coming out of it in the back end, um, and probably much needed, but, but I don't, so far, we'll find out more tomorrow. I don't think anything will be a significant time where somebody's out. I just think it's, it's guys getting banged up, and, and that's football in November. So, but I'll know more of that tomorrow um, as guys really have another day to respond. Gosh, he's playing really well. You know, Steve, he, uh, I think he's just, he's starting to get comfortable. And, and part of it is, is giving him opportunities to run the things that he's getting good at, that he's good at. And so he's getting more carries at the stuff that he likes. Uh, and in turn, he's working at other areas of his game um, that he can continually improve upon. You know, we, we went back and looked at the film. You know, the, the, the two times he puts it on the ground in, in, in football, the football world, he's carrying the ball in the wrong arm. So he's still a young player, you know, where he's got the ball in his inside arm 
and then the ball gets gets jarred out. So there's still plenty of room for improvement for him, but he's got he's got uh, unbelievable work ethic. You know, we condition our guys on Sunday nights, and uh, so. Friday night he has 29 carries for nearly 200 yards. On Sunday night he won every gasser on our team. And so I think it speaks volumes to the type of kid he is, the work ethic. Um, I think he's, he's starting to get comfortable in, in what his role is and what his responsibility is, um, but isn't settling for where he's at. He's really working to trying to get better, which is, which is pretty neat to see. How's your play calling changed from Well, I think the natural thing for Bishop would, would be that, oh, he's a, he's a spread gun, shotgun type runner, you know, that he's not the biggest in stature and he'll do better when he's running out of the gun. When you start to look at the stats and you start to self-scout and, and look at yourself, uh, he's, his numbers are actually better when, he's, when we're under center and he's dotted behind the quarterback seven and a half yards. That's where he's gotten some of his biggest carries. His biggest carries have come between the tackles, not so much on the perimeter. Um, and he's just comfortable doing that, you know. And when you go back to high school, you know, he really was a wildcat quarterback in a sense where they ran a lot of in-between-the-tackle stuff. He just did it from the shotgun and caught it and ran it. So I think that that's comfortable for him. Uh, he's found some success on the perimeter, um, but I think he, he's really comfortable when he can line up, you know, seven and a half yards behind the quarterback and take a handoff and, and, and go run, whether it's a zone scheme or a gap scheme. Can you talk about the inclusion of John how that's maybe um, you know, John's, John's played good football for us. Uh, I think the inclusion of John, Evan Hudson has been a, a real big inclusion, a guy that I don't know how much we were going to count on him. Um, and then the, the development of Harvickson, you know, we're starting to use some more bigger bodies on the field with Bishop. Um, and I think that's helped. You know, we were, in, we were in quite a few three tight end sets the other night, not necessarily in three tight end formations, but we had those three tight ends on the field. And those big bodies can sometimes cover guys up and, and create some more running lanes for Bishop. And I, and I think that that's helped some. Well, I think it's always evolving. And it depends on your opponent and what they do and what type of fronts they're playing and, and where you have some advantages as compared to some disadvantages. and. Um, uh, you know, anytime you can line up and run the ball 29 times or 30 times for almost 200 yards, I'll, I'll take it. You know, I think, again, I love balance. You said this runs harder than you expected. Does that, have you changed your calls over the inside or power the front? Well, I, I don't know if I would have thought coming into the season we could have said, I'm a, you know, Bishop Sankey could carry the ball 30 times a night. I didn't know if he was built that way, but he really is. He doesn't take a lot of head on shots, he does a nice job of bouncing off of tacklers. Um, we saw that the other night, and he almost ricocheted forward on one run. I mean, he, he does a nice job of using his body to, to create runs and um, probably has exceeded my expectation on that front uh, of his ability to, to have that many carries and still be strong, still be strong on a Sunday night two days later and run the way he ran in a, in a conditioning drill. Uh, he, he threw three balls that we refer to as catchable balls, you know, just give him a chance type throws. One to Kaysen, two to Austin, and we caught every one of them. So hopefully we throw more of them. You know, that, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal here is that when we get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, um, you know, I, I don't know, when you look at us across the board and we put, you know, our, our 11 on offense and then our 11 on defense and our 11 on special teams, I don't know how many times we have glaring um, – matchup opportunities where the matchup's really in our favor. But when those two guys are in one-on-one -on -one settings, that's a matchup that, that we feel really good about. And I'm sure there's a lot of other teams around the league that they feel really good about those opportunities too, based on whether it's on their O-line or their D-line or their wide outs or their running back, where it is. Those, those happen to be our matchup wins. And when we get them, we have to take advantage of them. And I thought we did on three occasions Saturday night. And we missed probably on three or four others. That, so um, I'd like to see that number increase to give them opportunities to make plays. It, it's not a real secret. That's part of our game plan, you know. And, and so much of what we do is 
trying to be able to run the football effectively enough to make you play single high defense and then you know when we get our chances one on one to try to win outside uh, they were they were essentially called, you know, one of which came in a no huddle setting to Kaysen. Uh, the other two to Austin were, were called one on one, you know, opportunities for him. And um, we called for a couple others. Sometimes we didn't quite get the coverage that we wanted to. Um, we called for some other ones and, and didn't quite make the throw or, or you know, slip coming out and, and weren't able to have a chance to throw it down the field that way. But it's going to be a part of our offense the final month of the season. Shaq obviously came here with a lot of expectations. Has he pretty much done what you thought, or is there anything about what he's done that's been different than what you've met? Well, I don't, I don't know how much we envision him really playing linebacker the way he is right now, even in base settings. But we wanted to keep him on the field, and I think he's steadily improved at that. It's not an easy transition. Um, he's only going to get better. You know, it's unfortunate he's kind of the, the ankle thing is just kind of nagged on him, but um, he's a unique special player that way and uh, his closing speed is beneficial to everybody um, I think we're, we're, we're seeing his ability you know the pick um, I, like I told him I said you know the the way the guy threw it he probably should just use his hands and not let the ball get into his get into his body but or you got to critique him for something but the burst that he showed uh, he almost steps out of that for the touchdown. I would have liked to have probably used him more on kickoff return stuff um, because of that explosiveness, but he's been so nicked up here and there that we haven't able to, been able to do that. Um, but he's uh, he's been great for us, you know, and I think his best days are really ahead of him. He's, he's an awesome kid. You both saw that pick, and especially the run back, and were wondering about what his capability would be on offense. I think he'd probably be a pretty good tailback, without a doubt. I think he'd be pretty good. Uh, we just haven't been able to get there yet. You know, we've made it a conscious effort, guys, and I'm going to say it over and over and over again that we're going to play good defense here, and I'm not going to sacrifice our defense for our offense. And, um, you know, again, I'd, I'd much rather win 21 to 13 in an ugly football game than lose 67 to 56 and, and, and lose pretty. That, that's not pretty to me. So we're going to play defense. We're going to run the ball. Hopefully we capitalize on a few more things in the passing game that, that we haven't been able to. Um, but, but the days, hopefully, of us just uh, putting all of our best players on offense because that's the sexy thing to do is, isn't going to happen. Can you talk about the ability of the defense to kind of eliminate a lot of big plays? I mean, they mm -hmm. had the one. Breakout. The draw, yeah, the right. third and long play. That was really pretty disappointing. I think it was third and 31 or third and 28, whatever it was. And they run a little inside zone handoff. And knowing, okay, that's fine. Let them get their 8, 10, 12 yards, tackle the guy, punt. And we have two guys run into each other. But I think their, their mentality of believing in the scheme and in the system and, and the not trying to make a play but allowing the defense to work is really showing up. And then we're becoming more and more physical as, the, as each week comes on, I think because of their confidence in the scheme. Um, we're tackling and we're hitting guys, and that, that's how you're supposed to play. There was some question about Danny Shelton's tackle on Maynard when Maynard got hurt in that play. It's kind of technique there, if it was a gator roll or what it was. How do you – teach that and how is that a good football player versus something that could endanger I didn't I, I don't know any more than what he just tackled the guy I really don't am I missing something sorry you're acting like a there was some question at Cal of whether or not he intentionally rolled Maynard's legs at that time. I don't think it was intentional at all that's the first I've heard of it I mean he um, he tackled him I don't know I, I don't that's all I can say on it. Sorry, I'm, I'm totally naive to what you're asking me. But he tackled the guy. You know, I mean, we got a penalty called for Travis Feeney hitting the quarterback too hard, I guess, too. I, I didn't understand that one either. Coach, you still have three games left, but like you mentioned, it is senior night coming up on Saturday. Just talk a little bit. You don't need to talk about the individual. Right. Just what the senior class is. Well, it's these guys, you know, they endured a lot. Their freshman year prior to us getting here, and they, you know, they signed on to to play with a, a different staff, and we came on board. And a lot of these guys have played a lot of football for us since they were puppies, you know, since the very beginning. With Schaefer, Bruns, uh, Justin, Glenn. Um, it's unfortunate Adam Long got injured a year ago, and he hasn't been able to have the senior he would have liked. But uh, all in all, a really good group of guys. Um, thankful for all that they've done for the program. I'm hopeful we can close out their senior 
season and their careers on a continual uh, upward trend from where they started to where their second, third, fourth, now fifth years have gone uh, because we've needed them along the way. And, uh, you know, as we talked to the, the team about it last night along with those guys. This is their senior night per se, but there's still a lot of football left on our schedule. There's a lot of meat left on the bone. And uh, this is playoff time, you know. So as much as, much as I love those guys, I love True and, and, and everything that they've done, um, because it's senior night, it's not going to make them or us play any better. You know, we, we need to prepare really well. We need to be prepared for a, for a physical battle. That's the way Utah is going to play the game. That's the way we're going to play the game. And so, um, you know, they're going to get about their eight seconds of fame when you call out their name and they run on the field. But after that, we got to go play football. Given the success of the, of the blackouts, are you going to call for another one? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a first down versus Star Lutalele and the Cougar brothers or whoever their name. I mean, these guys are, they got some goons up front. So that's been the focus here for the last 48 hours. Steve, you, uh, you mentioned in your opening remarks about the popular acclaim you had for another night ball game may not be there. From a coaching standpoint, what kind of a nuisance problem <laughs> headache is it to be practicing in the morning and playing at 7? That, that part's not that bad. That, that part really, it actually, you know, our, our last extensive practice is Thursday morning, so it really gives us another 12 hours or maybe not quite that much of rest, um, which isn't that bad. The hard part is just you're in a hotel all day, you know, and you try to keep the guys, you know, into it as best you can. You're watching these other games on TV, and uh, it's just it's a grind, you know. It's, it's not bad once or twice a year, but when it's your – I don't know how many of you guys know the number better than I know. I, we've played one, I think, 12:30 game all season, and every other one's been four o'clock or later. Um, this just the the um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the best word to describe it. It's not anxiety, it's not anxiousness, but it's a there's a sense of it's hard to sit still. You know, you, you want to go do what you're what you're asked to do, and to wait that long. Um, you know, it's it's challenging, but I guess the, to the flip side of that, we're used to it. You know, we we know how to we know how to deal with it. Um, from a fan's perspective, I'm I'm sure that it's it's a decent split. A lot of fans would love to play during the day. I think there's a there's a probably a, a group of, of younger of our of our younger fan base that doesn't mind the night game and, and has a chance to enjoy themselves throughout the day and come really fired up and to get CenturyLink rocking. So. Um, you know, you just, again, you play the hand you're dealt. Uh, we're hopeful, you know, by the time that opening kickoff's there, the place is packed and rocking, and um, we have a great home field advantage again. You know, we, we've played well at home. Um, we have one loss that I wish we could, we could have the last quarter and a half back of that game because I think that could have been a different outcome as well. But we've played well at home, especially defensively, and we're looking forward, for, looking forward to a, another really good effort from our guys. Has Cody essentially become the punt returner? Or is that still kind of a situational deal? Or? It's been situational. We just felt good about the returns that we had going last week and, and then the way Cody's been practicing. And, you know, when, when you've got a young football team, um, we've really tried to impress upon, upon them the way you practice will, will ultimately be how much you play or you don't play come Saturday. And it's you, you don't get to just to kind of go through the motions throughout the week and then expect to be an integral part of the game plan, whether it's on offense, defense, or special teams. And Cody, being a fifth-year senior, realizes the value of practice. He practices really, really well. He instills trust in the coaching staff. And then he gets his opportunities to go in and play. And, um, you know, he had another nice return again the other night, or a really nice return. He uh, had a big-time catch in the red zone to get us down to the down inside the five, held on some some critical field goals again, so um, or extra point stuff. And so he, he's uh, he's got a really cool role on this team that everybody appreciates what he brings. How, how important special teams this week, especially done in the return game? And it's big. To, to shut things down. It's big because they're they're good. They're they're. At, excellent special teams football team you can tell they work at it they practice it um, it's not just the kickoff return game I know we've seen that the last two weeks with, with Reggie um, but they do it with their the way they come after you and when you're punting the ball um, their covering of kickoffs they 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 do it all so it's it's going to be important you know I mean not that the other weeks haven't been important for us I think we've laid a 
and placed a lot of emphasis on special teams, and, and we're seeing the result of that. I thought we covered excellent last week on kickoffs against Bigelow, uh, who was a tremendous kickoff returner. The one we decided to pop over, Kunze, Travis couldn't have popped it over any better than he did, and got they got the ball right there on the 30 at a critical moment of the game. Uh, we covered and punted the ball better last week, and um, we got a little bit of a, a boost in the kickoff return game with Kevin Smith kind of popping one out of there. So it, it's been a point of emphasis for us and will continue to be because I think it's an area where um, we can perform well and have an impact on the game. Can, can you take your page out of last year's? Game plan, considering how that, how that I'd sure if Kyle wants to let us score a touchdown on the first play, you know, on the kickoff, we'd take it. But, um, you know, you can't rely on that kind of stuff. I mean, those, those types of plays you can't rely on. You can rely on playing hard, and if you continue to play hard and physical, you know, then maybe sometimes th those types of plays happen. You can knock the ball loose, and you're playing with good effort, you're there to scoop and score, things of that nature. You mentioned their line, and the star uh, kind of gets a lot of that. Yeah, they're they're playing really well up front. I mean, I think that's where their team starts. Um, both the Krugers with Star, um, you know, then Trevor Riley comes in and does his thing um, when they put him at the edge spot. I thought uh, uh, Bleckham being back, you know, he was out the first three games for whatever reason. Now he brings some attitude. It's a really attitude-based defense. They play hard nose. They play physical. They don't do a whole lot, but but I think that they take on the, the personality of Kyle and Kalani Sataki, their defensive coordinator, both guys who I, I have a great deal of respect for. Uh, but it starts up front for them. And so if we want to be effective Saturday night, our effectiveness has to begin up front. It can't just be on the perimeter and down the field. It has to be right up front. Speaking about criticism of players, you've been a reluctant critic. Well, I, I think that some things are for us in, in the way we are, um, you know, the way we're structured. Not that we don't criticize our players, uh, but for us, uh, you know, for me and for our kids, it's about trust and knowing that, that I'm going to be there for them and that they'll be there for me. And we make it a point um, from the opening meeting that nobody's going to criticize anybody here whether it's from a coach to a player, a player to a coach, or a player to a player. It's about being in this thing together. And if one area of our team isn't performing well, then um, other areas need to, need to step up and play even better while that, while that one specific area continues to improve. And so, um, and all of that has to start with me and understanding what those areas are and, and devote our time and efforts to that. Um, and if, if it's a consistently not work in the way we want it to work, then it definitely has fallen on me that, that we're not getting it fixed and getting it fixed in a timely manner.